Today's video is going to give us a lesson in why it is important to regularly audit the infrastructure on your networks, especially things like your routers, even if it seems like nothing is wrong with them because hackers can bide their time and strike when you least suspect it long after they've already compromised these devices. So there's a new kind of malware that's going around called Zurat, which is infecting people's routers, mostly small office, home office routers made by Asus, Cisco, Draytek, JCG, and Netgear. And mostly these routers that are being targeted are in North American and European business networks. So the malware gets its name from one of the configuration files that it uses called asdf.a, which indicates that the hackers basically just did a left-handed keyboard walk to name the file. And Zuo, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, is supposed to be the Chinese word for left. The Chinese word is being used because it's pretty much guaranteed that the hackers behind this are Chinese. And that's based on the fact that all of the IPs that the rat connects out to are in China, and there were Chinese words that were found within samples of the malware that were analyzed. And it's also believed that this malware is state-sponsored based on how sophisticated it is. And we know that the Chinese government is a lot of these state-sponsored hacks that go on. So this malware grants the attacker the ability to pivot into the local network and then gain access to additional systems on the LAN by hijacking network communications to maintain an undetected foothold. So it's trying to take over the whole network and in many cases, these small office routers, they were actually initially compromised two years ago, and the rats have only recently been detected. So there was a lot of opportunity to catch this, but a router, it's just one of those appliances that people rarely ever think about. In fact, chances are, once you initially set up your internet with your ISP, you probably never even logged into your router's console again, unless maybe you had to do port forwarding for some reason, but most people aren't doing that. But routers, they do get important firmware updates that contain security fixes to prevent this kind of access. And you could even make an argument that a router is even more important to secure than your client devices, because, well, the router is responsible for routing all of the traffic that's on your network. So if that gets compromised, then attackers can start doing man in the middle attacks. They can start doing DNS and HTTPS hijacking on every device that's on the network. And of course, pivoting to other machines that are on the network, which is exactly what Zurat does. Now, the exploit scripts for all these different routers are not available, and for many of them, it is unknown how exactly they were able to infiltrate the devices. They could potentially, or I guess they must be, using a zero day that isn't even known yet. But in the cases of the JCG Q20 mesh network routers, we know that the attackers are taking advantage of a couple of CVEs. And sure enough, if we look up these CVE codes on NIST, one of them is a pretty severe vulnerability, 8.8 .8 out of 10. And we can see that it's kind of an old vulnerability too. The other one is a critical security vulnerability, 9.8 out of 10, privileged remote code execution, AKA total pwnage of the vulnerable device. And both of these were actually published back in 2020. So this is something that has been known about for a while. And the people who fell victim to these vulnerabilities probably could have prevented it just with a simple update to their routers. Now, once the rat infects the router, it needs to start collecting information about it, as well as the rest of the land that it's on and start sending this back to the hackers. So things like internal IP addresses are gonna be collected, the router's authentication details, those can actually be grabbed from memory with a core dump, and then it connects back to the command and control server on port 48101 to send the gathered data and receive further commands from the hackers 
if necessary. So that's another port that you could have potentially been watching on your network to see if something was up, a random port being open that you're not using for anything else. It's probably a pretty huge red flag. Then the rat will also scan the other devices on the LAN against a wide array of ports to see if any vulnerable software is running on those devices and allow them to easily be taken over. And this rat also creates a daemon of itself on the router for the purposes of persistence. And in case you aren't familiar with what daemons are, they are usually small computer programs that run in the background of a system and they usually start up with the computer whenever it's restarted and they run the entire time that the computer is powered on. SSHD would be an example of a daemon, so that makes it so that you can SSH into the box, usually a remote computer. And yeah, it's going to start up automatically. If you kill it, it's gonna pop right back up, uh, so on and so forth. Now, probably one of the strangest things and also maybe one of the more interesting things about this rat is that one of them was talking to a command and control server that if you actually copied what the IP address was at the time and then took a look at it in your browser, it would appear to be a legitimate website. Here's a screenshot of the landing page uh, that that rat was talking to. This is a sample taken from one that was compiled back in 2021. So it appears to be a site, well, obviously, it's a site written in Arabic text, which would be meant for Arabic readers, but I was actually able to track down the original website, which I'm probably gonna mispronounce this, but musinlar.net, and from the little bit of research that I did on this site, it appears to be uh, somewhat dedicated to documenting and spreading the word about the Communist Chinese Party's human rights violations of the Uyghur Muslims. Uh, so the Chinese government, they actually run forced labor camps, many of them in the western part of the country that tourists usually don't visit. Uh, plus, these forced labor camps are highly restricted anyway. The only time outsiders are ever allowed near it is if they're paid CCP shills who uh, are just going to basically be there to help with their propaganda machine. Uh, so I found it really interesting that this program, th this Trojan, that was probably developed by Chinese government hackers, it has a command and control center that's set up to look like an Islamic news site that's obviously against the CCP. They're trying to spread awareness about the you know evils of the CCP and their people being mistreated. Uh, so I kind of wonder if they did that to maybe try and discredit this site, maybe try and make some people think that these guys are the real hackers that are deploying this. I don't know, it just seems really weird that they would, uh, I'm guessing, download all the assets from this site with HTT Rack or something like that and then make their command and control server look like this. Because uh, it, it, it kind of seemed targeted, right? You would think that they would... Um, just do it with a site that had absolutely nothing to do with the CCP, but hey, I guess in their case, maybe they're trying to kill two birds with one stone. So this is a pretty serious malware, again, probably developed by state-sponsored hackers that rats your router and then it also tries to rat every other device that is on your network. So trying to take full control of your network, something you really don't want to have happen. Now, the thing to take away from this attack is to make sure that all of the devices that are on your network are secure, especially the router. Because usually the router is much closer to the edge of the network. I mean, in most cases, it literally is on the edge of your network uh, facing the internet, which means that people can scan it. Automated bots can be designed to scan huge blocks of IP addresses for vulnerabilities. And if your router has them, then the bots can compromise them automatically and add you to their botnet. And when you're added to their botnet, which I imagine is what the main purpose of this was, as well as maybe to steal some corporate information, because again, small office routers, maybe they have some corporate secrets, secrets that the CCP is interested in. Um, but these botnets, they will oftentimes get sold to other hackers who want to do DDoS attacks and things like that. So you could be part of a botnet and not even know it. You won't even realize that your computer is sending unsolicited connections or uh, doing anything until somebody decides to purchase that botnet service. And 
your computer gets recruited as one of their zombie machines. So make sure your routers are updated, make sure there are no unnecessary services running on them that might increase the attack surface, like remote administration. That's a really common attack vector for hackers. If you aren't using it, turn it off. Make sure that your admin password is very strong and also make sure that there aren't any default users on the router with easy to guess passwords. Usually you don't have to worry about that with home routers, but of course, Soho routers are usually a much juicier target. So make sure that you keep them locked down. Like and comment, attack the algorithm. Follow me on Odyssey. Have a great day.